Hello and welcome to another week gamers. You know Andy, it feels like ages since I've actually said that in a video. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've been in a video. Either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Two Andys for the price of one. I am chuffed to the bits today that Andy K has been able to come down and join me in person. Just in case you're wondering, we're in separate cameras because we are maintaining a level of social distancing between us. But... We almost don't need to measure it because there's a box between us which, which kind of does the distance for us. A box of quite some heft, <laughs> to be honest. Or as I expected. Them. Yeah, um, they, these have been a bit of a surprise for us. The bunker has not been, by any stretch of the imagination, a, a bastion of GW. No, I'm not going to say love in suggesting it's been GW hate. It hasn't been. It, it creeped back into our lives slowly but surely through Guilty, which was, you just dabble. You know, do, do 10 guys that were just your friend. You know, you always want to do them. And then, and then you just like Mark, because he's just like Mark's pants on the head. It's absolutely mad fantasy. But now 40 k's back. Yeah. Mentions, it seems. It has been funny, because Brett, Brett, I think, particularly would have always been, oh. <laughs> no, not, again, it's not, there's, there's, it work. yeah, there was that kind of, oh, I really couldn't be bothered. Yeah. And, and now they've done things to make us bothered. But you today have zipped down to uh, Bangor. Shout out time for Gareth down in Replay yep. Games. Replay. Um, our local flags. I, I hate that term. <laughs> flags. Flags. <laughs> our local hobby store. <laughs> yes. And he's got all this new stuff in. Yep. Shiny big boxes piled up to the door. So Andy K and a couple of the other lads at the bunker bombed down there today. And spent a small king's ransom. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> now, just for the boys and girls at home, mm -hmm. uh, this is one of the three starter sets. You've gone for the, uh, as we like to call it, the balls deep one. Yeah, well, this is the one below the proper Indominus big set. So this is command. So you get actual terrain and the board and some plastic men and a rule book. But the rule book is literally just the rules. So it doesn't have all the lore. It's not, it's not, you know, the Holy Bible you're bringing around with you. Yeah. I've okay. seen the other rubric. It's large and hefty. We'll have a look at the comparing of the two of those briefly yes. later on. I've I've got the Bible uh, here. Uh, we don't mean that sacrilegiously, by the way. Bible is a term for a collection of books. Um, yeah, it's a big book. It, it really is. In Dominus. I just want to bring home the fact that you've bought the Command Edition. Yes. And... You don't care about Space Marines. No. And you don't care about Necrons. No. You pretty much bought this just for the terrain and the slimmed down rulebook. Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> I'm, I'm a sucker for terrain and I, I don't want to carry that huge book around with me. So, on, yes. on the terrain score, I, I can totally sympathise with you. I think there's a game to be made just from terrain. Well, I mean, regarding this book box, from what I can gather, if you're wanting into it, this is £105. You get the rubric, which to buy in store for the big thick book is 40 odd quid. The terrain pack is out separately, it's 55 quid. So there's 95 straight there. And then we all know, for good or for worse, the cost of miniatures. Um, there's two character miniatures in here, which are usually going for about 20 quid each yep. in Games Workshop. And then a squad of Marines and a squad of Necrons is probably around 25, 30 quid each. So you're probably, I think you're saving about 60 or 70 quid. Well, there's, minimum. A, there's a squad of bikes in this, and they're, they're oh, yeah, bound to be about 29, 30 quid. And destroyers, I think, are in this yeah. one as well. So, so the, the, in terms of value for money, there's no denying the Command Edition is, I hate to say it, I think it's more on the nose than Indominus. Uh, probably. Um, Indominus is more. You just get more. Yeah. Here's um, piles of stuff on a fancy rule book. It's, it's the collector's edition. what they do as well. Technically, I mean, I'm doing Sisters of Alan because I, nuns and guns and all fanatic lunatics. I love it. Played them shockingly 15, 17 years ago. <laughs> to my age. Um, and I've decided to um, rekindle that love of nuns and guns. So that, that's it for me. And as I say, the train. Um, so, Mr. Brown, you're getting the Marines out of this, and another bunker dweller is getting the Necrons out of it. So, it's not going to waste. But, as I said, 105 quid, if you split that with a mate, that's what, 52, 50 each. And you've got your battle map, 
your drain on at least four seats. See what we're wanting to do, because we're wanting to do kind of 25 power, which probably means nothing to anyone who doesn't go 40k. Um, but small little skirmish games. If you play Kill Team, Kill Team with a tank added on is essentially what we're going for. Now you had a good point in the head, and just for the boys and girls and mums and dads at home who don't know about 40k, we both know having been young once, yeah. and one of us haven't even worked for, for them, nothing is more terrifying and daunting than walking into a GW store sometimes as a complete outsider. Mm -hmm. This one here, the Recruit Edition, if you've got a kid clamouring at you, or you even as a big mature grown up are thinking, do I really want to? The Recruit Edition is literally giving you a handful of men, the bare bones of rules, and enough just to, to taste it and mm -hmm. see, can I understand it? Do I like it? <coughs> the Elite Edition throws in a little bit of basic terrain. I think it's cardboard terrain, isn't it? I think so, yeah. I think you get the proper battle map. Yeah, you thing, get the proper board. The we cardboard forward. sort of plinth building for a bit of terrain to block line of sight a bit or whatever. A few more men, the rules and all the rest of it. And then this Command Edition is kind of... If you've decided yes, you can go straight S. The nice thing that they seem to have done is those units, like a one, two, three, built up on each other. So if you end up buying the recruit edition and you go, mm, okay, go to elite, mm, okay, go to command, mm, okay, and actually you've enough to play with then because you've yeah. got a couple of characters, you've got a couple of specials, a couple of troops, a couple of whatever else going on. We haven't learned all the new terminology because there's too many silly words. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't ask me about Necrons and Marines. I, I don't know yeah, much. it's HQ, tri HQ and Trip Choices as far as I'm concerned. Elites and Heavy Sport, go away with all your weird names. and yeah. Even the paint colours annoy, annoy me. <laughs> yeah, some of them aren't even colour the colour anymore. No! It's like, it, it's like, I don't know, fabulous black. And you're like, what colour is that? Oh, it's green. Like, <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah. I've bought greens that aren't, and... Yeah. and and a dust, I bought a dust colour. I don't even know what yeah, colour dust I mean, is. If you've seen any of my painting tutorials I've ever done, I, I'm still very much down the road. I have blue, I have white to it, I have light blue, I have a little bit of grey to it, or black, I have dark blue. Yeah. I'm cheap, mostly, because the price is a pace. There's no mystical colours out there. They're all colours, and every colour has a proper colour name. Yeah. And don't get fooled into thinking that somehow special black is specialer than black. Though there is quality differences in certain brands of paint, that has to be said. Well, that's getting off topic. Yes, that's, true. So, should we talk about this then? Go for it. Right. Okay. So, Command Edition. Um, a strange box, because I've always been used to them lifting off. But it seems to be the size of the old boxes, <laughs> like second edition and stuff. Um, so, yeah, Marines, Necrons, on the cover, which says it all. On the rear, that's what you're getting. So if we see here, command manual, a ruler thing. They've done away with the whippy sticks from the mini rulers. Remember the whippy sticks? I remember the whippy sticks, sticks. yeah. <laughs> the whippy sticks. I think that's probably why they got rid of them. Um, Pretty much. Sure. Space Marine with a big shield, your captain, a Primaris captain. And then you get the assault intercessors, which are Marines with, what we played a game the other night, heavy bolt pistols and chainswords. Yep. Yes. And Andrew plays... Blood Angels, so they're lethal. Um, and then we've got Necrons, we've got a a destroyer, which is Egyptian sounding first and then destroyer. What is that? Scopec? Scopec or something like yeah, that there? Okay, he's a destroyer, he's big and angry. And we've got an overlord, which I assume that okay, so that one's the character for this. And then I think you get Necron warriors and scarabs and all that. And then classic terrain from the battle map. So, ta-da, <laughs> all the plastic. Good, yeah, can we see? Yeah, yeah, no, we can see. I, I, was, I, was slight, I was stunned into slight silence, I'm afraid, just because yeah. that's the first time I've seen the lid off the I, box. Yeah, I have to say, like, literally, I've, I haven't opened this. This is the first time looking at it. I came up to Andrews to film this. Um, so, shall we begin? Oh yeah, go for it. So the train on top, which is pipes and a generator or yeah, some sort of generator, cogitator or whatever it is. Pipes and grills. Yeah, um pipes, lots of pipes and cogitators and random bits on that one. This one is I don't know, it's a it's a, what is that? <laughs> it's a generator? Silo. 
of some sort. Uh, sure. It looks cool. <laughs> Let's um, call it a generator. Silo sounds a bit peaceful, peace loving. So that's two things of train, and then right. So right. So these are the bikes. I assume they're the same bikes as what came in the Dogma, so it will be push fit, I'm assuming. Yeah, they seem to be. So we've got three bikes of all their gubbins. Um assault intercessors with all their gubbins. There's a fair amount on there, even for push fit, that's still a lot of Wow, yeah, I, I've got to admit, I actually got, I had to take a break when I was building them, which was weird. I have two characters on one spray. So we've got the Overlord and the Primaris Man with the Shield. Um, yeah, a couple of different heads. You have a helmet with a visor, a helmet, and a bald man. Fair enough, <laughs> it's their own. Um, and then Destroyer, this is Destroyer with his big um, axes. Big Necron uh, axes. And then Warriors. Warriors with their Gauss guns. So they, I don't know, they have a new Gauss gun. They used to have just the one rifle, but now they've got like a mini carbine version of it. Scarabs. Yeah, all the Necron love that you ever want. That looks nice. Okay, so we've got some nice walls. Now, what is this? This is the Sector Imperialis. This fits with the sector, the sector Imperialis. So if you look on their terrain, they've got like Admech terrain, industrial terrain, and Imperial Sectoralis, I think it's called, or Sectoralis, I don't know. It, it's, it's made up Latin. Imperial Sector. <laughs> yes. This fits in with that. So it'll all tie together if you've got any of this already. Lovely texture, plenty of detail on it. That's quite cool. But as you say, even for the rule book and the terrain in this set alone, yeah, it's worth the money. Yeah, if if money. you're into that kind of thing, obviously. Are we missing marines? That would be just. I thought it came more marines than that. No, I think no, it's, we got no, marines. We got it, yeah, okay. and then I think they're both okay. So they're both no, they're not the same. I thought they were the same. Nope, they're slightly different, but enough there to build a couple of buildings and um, throw down the table. Then you get. The trademark divider that they do nowadays. Yeah, a nice poster. Sometimes you get a couple of them in the box. So if you wanted a poster of Warhammer 40,000. That's nice. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of the new logo. So it doesn't seem to be as grim dark as I remember. I've got a lot of holes in my walls, so posters are nice. <laughs> and then we get to bases, which are always required. Uh, ten white dice. Can be plenty if you're only starting out. Uh, the rubric, which is all bound. More bases, character bases, and bike and bases. Bike bases, all with punch fit holes already put in them. That's one thing to watch if you're building these. The instruction build book now is is a lot more detailed. Even though they're push fit, you're not allowed to use your imagination to build these. You just build them like you're supposed to, and they really like to be built the right way. Um, but do watch out for the bases because there's like four or five different types of base and you've got to put the right base with the right kind of figure. Uh, yeah, a poor man's version of the whippy sticks. <laughs> Um, them old whippy sticks, you could break skin with them. We really should find out if there was a proper name for those. I don't know. I've got them from Epic 40,000. I have about six from Battlefleet Gothic. Gothic, Gothic. <laughs> they were brilliant in yeah. Battlefleet Gothic, yeah. But these are actually really handy as well. I've got these for Kill Team, because Kill Team is so small that you don't really need more than 12 inches. So she said. But this is the, this, <laughs> this is small now too, though, with the, with the boards. Yeah, and it's the, all been kind of downsized. Yeah. So. So you don't need massive tables. You don't need a big. You can actually play this on a little kitchen table now if you want. Okay, you'll yeah. you'll either all die very quickly because everyone's so close and crammed in, or you play with less stuff. That's exactly it. I mean, that's what Kill Team we thought was going to be. And this, as I say, at the level we're wanting to do it at at the moment, um, is literally just a wee bit bigger than Kill Team. Although our, our friend Brett has. I've become a chaos lord himself and has all the chaos. <laughs> I, I'm, I've swiftly slipped down a, a, a dark tunnel in the Blood Angels, and I think Bob has done the same with the Imperial Guard, to be <laughs> honest. So here's the decals. Um, no decals for the Necrons, the robot boys, although I'm not even sure Necrons did that. Ever? I think, I think, I seem to remember they did. I seem to remember you used to get weird symbols for them. Well, not anymore. Not now. Not now. So you've got... Your Ultramarines, your Blood Angels, Spatials, Dark Angels, uh, 
uh, yeah, that's it. That's all you're getting. Um, no salamanders or anything? Nope, you're not cool. You've got to remember, everything's about downloadable content now, so there'll be more releases with more cool things in them. To be fair, though, they, they, they're the four original chapters. Yeah. You know what I mean? You've got the Ultramarines, you have the good boys. Um, the Blood Angels, who are good, but with a dark secret. Well, Dark Angels are kind of like that, and Space Wolves, who are mad. Not bags. Um, but yeah, you've got a ring here, you've got your own squad markings and stuff. So you've got your Tactical, your Devastator, Assault. Uh, squad markings. Yeah, there's plenty there. I mean, all the decals you'd ever need, really, I suppose. It, it, is, a fairly, it is a fairly filled sheet now. It's nice yeah, to see. It is. Um, Get a ball so of decal softener, kids. It's a lifesaver. And then you've got your, your big box with a whole bunch of screaming faces. Because that's what everyone needs. No, that should be a poster. That's cool. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> well, I suppose when you look at that base box, you actually could just very carefully yeah. cut that out and frame it. That's yeah, pretty grim dark one. Yeah, if you're not using that box. <laughs> So, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I'll take that. Um, so, um, let's have a look at this. This is the boards. Now, I have. I'm going to take a cellophane of those while you're doing that. Good. Yeah, I'm trying to get the cellophane up. Well. Here, will that help? That might help. Um, I have some of the boards that Games Workshop have done in the past. I have. I don't have a kill team one, even though I played a lot of kill team. I do have them for Age of Sigmar. Um, because you get the two war cry sets, and you put them together, you get enough to play a thousand points of Age Sigmar, which is very nice. And they're pretty robust and have pretty decent, I've got no complaints about them. Now, do you think that whenever they done Age of Sigmar, and there was a kind of, the little bit, I think there was, it's a, suffice to say, it wouldn't be incorrect, that there was a bit of a hissy fit in the community when the old Hammer world died. Oh, yeah. They, and they, then... I think it's more to do with the... Mistreatment of it, they just killed it. Aye, it they were like just they were a bit they were a bit rude like to it. But I wonder, Warcry came along kind of after that. Was Warcry? Do you think a way to kind of get people to go? Well, look, you haven't really bought into this way. We want try this, discover that it's nice, and slip your way back into Age of Sigmar and be our friend again. Maybe I mean, I mean that that worked very well with Kill Team Forty K because it's happened to us. Well, but funnily enough, we didn't do Warcry because Warcry is a very different game to both Age of Sigmar and. How Kill Team works. It's not like a mini Age of Sigmar. It's, all right, it's, it's quite regimented in how you set out your train and it all works off cards. Um, I haven't actually played it. We never actually, I've never actually played never it. Never got around to it. I do like the train that came with it, so that's why I bought a couple of the boards. They're good for Age of Sigmar. Um, I don't know. I think I didn't play first edition Age of Sigmar because I remember playtesting it. Somebody brought it up to We Gamers and it being. Frankly, terrible. It was just not very good, the rules. And then second edition came along, and Brett was kind of interested in it. And we played it, and it was, I was still a bit on the fence, but you have to get into the mindset of Age of Sigmar. It is proper pants on head uh, fantasy. It's, they destroyed the old world, and only the best survive. It is basically it. And every, the magic's all OP. All the close combat's OP. Everything's just. Supercharged at all times. You can't, yeah, you, you, you don't get away with what used to happen in the old hammer. So some might like it, some don't. But if you get into that mindset and just think, yeah, it doesn't matter, everything's crazy, nobody really dies, and it's just nuts. It's kind of gone very high fantasy. It's really high fantasy. I mean, you've got doors running around and dirigibles and high elves of the mountains with giant worshipping car hats. And yeah. It is non nonsense, like. But if. <laughs> If you like the nonsense, then go for it. We like the nonsense. Right. So this is going to open up. I think this is one piece. So you've got a desert, well, red planet, Admex style look. Um, I've seen this. Eh, nah. I like the other side, which I'm going to try and open. Aha. There you go. I like that kind of charred black side of it. Um, it's thick. Thick uh, cardboard. They are solid like. And as I say, I think they've even got the Jeffrey Marker thing laid on. I don't know. Brilliant. But um, that's all lovely. There's a wee bit of ultramarine armor. That kind of wee bit of ultramarine armor. Some poor dead ultramarine can and stuff. It doesn't really matter. You're going to put your own stuff on it, your own miniatures. I'm just not a huge fan of the red. I prefer 
black scorch art. I kind of like the rust trade because when you read the, the background for the Admech, they have a big habit when they find a planet that they want to, to use for their Forge Worlds mm -hmm. of terraforming to look like Mars. Obviously they do. <laughs> the, why, why would you not waste that resource? Yeah, I don't know. I am just a lot of my minis I base in this ash waste sand. kind of yeah. thing. I got it. It's I got it from the pet store. It's, it's sand for an aquarium, but it like glitter through it. I don't know. It's just the cheapest, easiest way to base things. To be terrible basin. <clears throat> I do wonder. <clears throat> sorry, as I choke here. I do wonder, do they actually sell base material now that matches the boards? Um, they probably do. Well, yeah, they've got that texture paint, so you can buy that oh, Martian wasteland or something it's called, and you, you, it's, it's like paste. You can paste it on the base and leave it now, and it all crackles, and then it'll look like that. See? Lovely. So, yeah, they've got it. <coughs> I'm just so, going to choke death here. Um, I, have, I have opened these for you, and uh, yeah, uh, quite a difference inside oh, a rule book. Nine. Right, okay. So we'll get to the rubric. This is the command manual. Well, you be better. These are cheat sheets straight out. So as I say, push fit these together. You didn't want to paint them, there you go. Oh, and they're separate. So as your Necron player, you've got overload rules, uh, Egyptian destroyers rules, uh, Necron warriors rules, and Scar Swarm rules, all on each cheat sheet. I have no idea how these apply to proper 40k or what's in the codexes for these boys. These are and from what I can gather from seeing things online, the Indominus people, um, the, the stuff in Indominus is for Indominus. So these should balance out together so you get a decent game if you bought this. Um, Space Marines, you've got the Outrider uh, bikes, which are huge. Um, Assault and Possessors, which we've seen firsthand from our playtest game, are lethal. And the Man with the Shield, Primaris Captain. We can take quite a pound of Four and one will save it says here, yeah. Yeah, but not from 15 <laughs> power hammers to the face. <laughs> yeah. That that just was cruel and unusual. Bless him. <laughs> anyway, so you get that. Um, I suppose that would be very useful if you're just planning on playing command. Yeah. So I think once you get into it, they'll probably be set to the side. Command manual. Now, I don't know what this is. So it has the stuff on it again for... Oh, this has got actually new stuff, sorry. So this has got a Doomstalker, a Heavy Destroyer, Lockhurst, Heavy Destroyer, the Invader ATV, which is a Space Marine quad, and a Firestrike Servo Turret, which appears to be a Space Marine on, well, an old World War II Bofors twin cannon thing. Sweet. Um, so this is at the very back when you buy more. Ten, ten well, I suppose it's nice in a way that yeah, the, next step, literally called next steps. Yeah, so there you go. If you buy the next couple of things, you've already got rules. You can go home and get them built and start playing with them. So, command manual, what is this? Contents, introduction. We apologise for everyone home, but Andy has to look at it his direction. It's sideways to you, but you can't read the small words anyway, people, so don't so, worry. Since he's got introduction, I think this is a step-by-step -step rubric. Maybe what is 40k? Yeah. This is kind of the first pages of the fluff from the big rule book in a magazine. Oh, here we go. Let's go. We've got a hobby. Here's some Eldar and some Death Guard. Look at what we could have. How to paint. So here's all the hobby stuff. Gaming, what you need, your dice, tape measures, core rule book. It's exactly what it is, look. Yeah. It's the first few pages. It yep. Split up. First okay. few pages of the core, the the new core fancy rule book in a magazine format to give so, you yeah, the we've kind got of got background. A of, we've got a little bit of background here. The the ancients arise. What, what's been going on? Very brief overview. Angels of death, which is our ultimate. It's good that there's some fluff in there. And again, if yeah, you're watching yeah. this and you're you're new to the whole 40k, fluff is what we old timers lovingly call the background story, which is as flexible as an elastic band. So yeah, right, so that stops there, essentially. So that's all fluff. What 40k is and fluff is that much of this command book. And then old Bobby G there. <laughs> with his big burning sword. <laughs> I'm an ultramarine guy. If I did the space race, I'd be all kinds of Yeah, you're a purist. Um, start playing, so it tells you everything you get in your box and what to do. And here we go, here's how to build them. Um, yeah, it's literally just going to tell you how to build every time. Yeah, that's nice, step and by step. Uh, and there's your first battle. Contact, so here's your first battle. How to play it out, how to advance, how to shoot, space one shooting, 
next turns, how you win, how to build your captain, and then put your captain into the game. So that there's a little literally mission here with three scarborns and a primary captain. Well, the odds are stacked. <laughs> <laughs> Um, turn phases, so how to fight, how to charge. Oh, right, so that's teaching you how to do close combat. We and could then, probably do with reading that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then we've got the big scarab lad. He looked, yeah, he's got a big scythe thing, so he must be all about close combat. Yep, that's how put in together. And then you're building your pipes, your fuel pipes. They were fuel pipes, right? Oh. So. Prometheum. We go. Engines of Annihilation. So now you've got your three destroyers versus. Your five close combat space marines. How do you do close combat over pipes and stuff? Yeah, it's so literally step by step guide. So then you build your bikes. Your bikes are going to be then used in the next mission. It is quite well done. That's this is not like the edition that I. So no. the first edition of forty k I got was second edition. I didn't do Rogue Trader. I was what a tiny boy and a nappy at that stage. If the original came with three books this size, okay. Well, I call it the original. Second edition to me is. The start of 40k being like this, all right. So, you have three books like this you got the Rune book, the War Gear book, and the Codex Imperialis. Codex Imperialis is just all your fluff and army lists, basic army lists, squats, and stuff are still on that crazy times. Um, and then the Rune book was this, but there was no step by step. It was you read this, learn this, <laughs> and go play, go and play, and then buy a codex and learn it. <laughs> And that was it. Oh, so, right, that thing of terrain, that is a thermal exchange shrine. Oh, right, a go. thermal exchange shrine. Of course it would have to be Absolutely. something like that. And counter -counter. This is just literally leading up to a big game using everything. There you go. Final confrontation is... That's actually quite good. That's almost like a wee campaign you're doing. Do you know what it puts me in mind of? You know those part works they've done? Yes. I like the fact that this, if if you're sensible about this, you will go home and you'll start with it and you go, okay, I only need to build three scarabs and a space marine. Yeah. And we can learn the first part. You know what you could do? I mean, literally, you could go, I'm going to build these, which is the five space marines and the ten warriors, paint them, play with them, and then when I paint the next ones, I'll play with them. And almost, you know. Yeah. Stagger and get everything done at a pace. Yeah, that'll be nice. We've got some nice artwork here. We've got the old imp fists, imperial fists. So these boys that you get here in imperial fist colors with a tank and a giant dreadnought. Uh, old Bobby G fighting Matarian with all his ultra buddies. Uh, white scars, salamanders, blood angels with the yellow helmets. Uh, Yeah, it's something intercessors now. Yeah. Um, gene stealers. They're getting a good range of. So, this is the Adeptus of Spartans. And the Necrons, don't even ask me about the sets because I have no idea. Uh, but, yeah, Necrons, if that's your thing, you dig that. Yeah, and I only do, it only dawned on me last night that I have to sit down and repaint my intercessors' helmets all yellow. I'd lovingly done them and highlighted them all in red. Was that, was that, yeah, that was. I thought that was the Jump Pack boys back in the day. But the, the, the Jump Pack, remember, was optional. So yeah. basically, if you were an assault marine for getting in close ah. and fast, you got to wear a yellow helmet. Okay. Not gold, just yellow. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of Necrons or Space Marines, but this, the yes. Tune Stalker looks incredible. There's something very 19, 1920s War of the Worlds about it. Yeah, that's exactly what I said when I first seen the picture, and that almost was enough to lure me. Mm. And the other thing I like, as I said, I'm not a huge fan of Space Marines. But the ATV just looks incredible. Um, but maybe that's the orc in me going, I could loot that. I don't know. It yeah. looks class. And that brings you to the end. And then you've got your stats here. So you've got the sheets, but you've also got it straight up on here. There you go. That's not a bad one. It's not. That's not. But this is the one that I wanted because it's small and easy to put into a carry case or what. And this is... I'm just checking. I forgot I've actually seen it. Yeah, no fluff. This is just all roots. Yep. And tiny pictures as well, it seems there at the back. Yeah, we've, we've, got, we've got the Imperial uh, Guard, I don't know what their name is anymore. Tie, because people are about Tie. <laughs> I don't know, you know that weird kid that nobody talks about, they play Tie. And Eldar <laughs> and Chaos, the classic matchup. Although I wouldn't have put them up against, uh, wouldn't put them in your corn. No Slanesh boys should be in there fighting Eldar. Making them all scared. A bit old rivalry. Yeah. 
But yeah, that is. Oh, we've got some more pictures. Oh, Victorian. Yeah, but there you go. It's oh oh oh. We've actually got all the missions as well. We've got Crusade in here. Crusade is the narrative driven campaign, which I think we're all kind of on board for. Up at we gamers, and then we've got oh, that's a nice picture of Nids. Oh yeah. You don't. I, I don't often see artwork on the Nids. No, there's no sisters. They made it in there. That's oh, you yeah. happy. They did. They're absolutely insane. We'll I'm, have to, I'm we'll reading through their codex, and it's it's it is proper grand art. It's worse than what it was back in the day. We'll uh, have to show the boys and girls at home an evening uh, some proper pictures of your sisters because they're very nice. Well, thank you, sir. Do you see their cult? So we. Well, we've got little bits that aren't just rude, but we tip it. So there's a guy who's got a Gene Steer cult, I'm just talking about his crusade force that he's built. Um, so that's all the crusade part. And then, yeah, here we go. These are the match play games. So you've got all your match play in one book. And then Eternal War, which is the basic mission I think came in Dominus, is the. You just beat each other up. How about Gaz He's going to love Gaz. Yep. He is becoming quite large these days. Um, more missions, open play. So open play, I think you just throw anything on the table, isn't it? Yeah, pretty sure that it's the all comers welcome. Yeah. So we're looking, so this here battle sizes is a new thing. So you've got combat, patrol, encouraging, strike force, and onslaught. And we're kind of just, at this moment, not bothering with points and just building power, power levels. So we're playing 50, which is 25 aside. And it's, I don't know, the one the one we tested out was a bit crap. Yeah. Just we ended up sitting talking for too long and nobody playing like two turns. <laughs> this is a very nice picture of Elgar. That's a classic. Oh, yeah. Um, so there is some of the battlefields. I don't know. I know you don't like that Rust Red Battlefield, but I must admit, in photographs, it really makes everything stand out. Is that enough for it, you? It, yeah. That kind of, it makes the, you can see even here on the screen, you can see the, it binging out there. Uh, I don't know. Well, obviously, I've only seen it here now, we'll fire it out in the table, see how it goes. Mm. I mean, you can turn it over and do whatever. Yeah. Match it with it. Um, I don't know, I do like the black, the scorched earth. I just think, you see that black? It doesn't work with these buildings. So I'm planning on painting my buildings and burnt out. So it goes yeah. with the blackened earth. Anyway, so different. So this is a big part of 40k now, which is terrain. All your terrain has keywords, like your infantry. So if we look at, we look here. You, and I know this from a from Kill Team and from Age of Sigmar. Every month these keywords now. So you've got faction keyword. So this primary slot is Imperium. He's a space marine with that star type. Well, basically you pick his chapter, which means if he's an ultramarine, he'll unlock their keywords for their special rules. And then the keywords, he's an infantry person, so he can do things that only infantry can do. He's a character, which means that he can't be shot or targeted if people are near him. And he's a Primaris captain, so he uses this rule line. They've done that for their terrain now, which is kind of handy. As soon as you learn it and get used to it, you'll be like, that piece of terrain has this keyword, I know what I can do with it. Kind of makes terrain interesting. Yeah, it's it's not just a thing that you anything will make do. Yeah. And there's no, it, it takes away the, the old arguments. Yeah. Because a lot of time you've looked at a building in the past and assumed it would have done something for you and it didn't whereas now as yeah. long as you put a wee you, know, you might want to put a wee label or we post it on them for your first couple of games to get it under your head uh this is how you build your army so we're at the moment we're doing patrols which is 25 par and so 50 par game is two combat patrols 25 and it tells you exactly what you need to do so you need a minimum one hq and one troop and then it tells you so you can take two hqs up to three troops, not two elites, not two fast stack, not two heavy sport, not two flyers. With the addition of flyers, I mean, that hasn't changed in, what, 30 years, basically? Yeah. HQ troops and elites. Except for the fact that you're allowed to take only one troop at that level. I, I brought up on one HQ, two troops. Minimum. Yeah. That was your tax. And that's it, yeah, just telling your attackments. Um, so, yeah, I'm just trying to get to the part where it's actually just rooms. Well, there's some nice dark uses. Elliot Hammer, your dark is very pretty. Building an army. Only war, sorry, that's the mission that comes in the Indominus. Missions, uh, more artwork. So, you're right, okay, so he's got a very fancy hat for Imperial Guardsman. You see it on? Oh, yeah! The big old feather. 
It's a long time since we've seen ornate Imperial Guard. Yes. Maybe that's a, a feather in the All cap right. for something new coming. So that's your ruse there. So page 17 to page 44. That's nothing. You could read You could read that like two nights. Yeah. Well, as I say, <laughs> growing up, I, I started with second edition and it was that command manual was your, your rule book. Um, as it's straight up. But I wanted this primarily for the train and this because I want to carry this about instead of, well, let's do it. Size oh yeah, go for it. So Indominus is very nice and it's the big bad boy, but you're carrying that around with you. Fair play to you. Um, well, that, that reminds me of the third edition. It, it'll it'll build really. your strength in your arms. Yeah. These are strength pieces, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right enough. There you go. That is the command box. Do, do you know, as I sit here looking at that, I, I, I'm, I, I have to say, slightly envious of a pocket sized edition rule book. Yeah, it is nice, like. Yeah. Um, hopefully somebody will be buying a couple of these that literally just wants the train the buildings and goes, anyone want a rule book for tenor? I could imagine, yeah. I could imagine maybe find these on eBay because people will want, at 55, or sorry, not 55, at 105 pounds, people are going to probably want this to split it. Yeah. Because it's not that hard on the bank, I suppose. Not really for what you're getting. Yeah. Get an extra terrain, extra battle map, and if you're playing Marines, you've got reinforcements, you've been able to double up them classic. And really good bridge wise bikes. Yeah. You can double up them, you get another captain. Or for the Necrons, you're getting more robots. I can quite happily see a lot of people like yourself wanting the want the rule book and wanting the terrain. Yeah. And if they get rid of the two sets of figures, it almost gives them their money back. Yeah. And they'll not feel cheated. And then there'll be some will kind of go, oh, terrain's class, the board. Oh, yeah, managers, oh, not so fast in the, the pocket rule book. I like my big one. Mm. Throw this one away. Yeah. And I'll dive in there and snipe one of those. Or if you've got one, let me know in the comments. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's... I, I, yeah, I don't mean to say I hate to say it. I'm pleased to say that seems to be a sensible, a sensible, well-priced, well-put-together package. Yeah. No, 100%. For first time, I'd say that rule book, you don't need to even look into it. If you've never played 40k in your life, and you went, this is cool, murderous robots fighting men and but also murders, but in bar armor. Um, Good murders and bad murders. Yeah, yeah. Um, you just need to work. Because that, that literally is all you need to play everything that you get in that box. It's quite a nice little book. Sweet. So, there we have it. Yeah. So, I think I think it's safe to say we're happy with that. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think it's a pretty decent, decent yeah. box. I think as old timers, the Elite Edition and the Recruit Edition don't, don't offer anything that's needed because recruit edition is like literally a couple of figures and pamphlet rules of sorts. I think the command's the only one that comes with that mini rubric. Yeah. So. so there you go, folks. That's that's the one to check out. Keep your pennies for that one. And whilst that is the RRP about it, of it, I am sure if you shop around, there will always be places offering some modest and approved level of discount, which will save 100%. you even more pennies. Hundred percent. So there we go. Right, well, we're going to get on with things because I dare say Andy's going to go home and start building and painting terrain. I'm going to repaint the helmets on my intercessors and uh, then it's tea time for us. Yeah. So uh, let us know what you think of that. If you have been a hard and fast fan of GW, is this a thing that pleases you with joy? Let us know. If you have been a former fan and walked away, does this look like it's something that's going to perhaps tempt you back to the table? Or if you still don't care, but you enjoyed the video, um, give us a thumbs up or we subscribe if you would be so kind. It'd be appreciated. At the end of this, there will be links. We'll uh, tag in a couple of links to, as Andy mentioned earlier on, the uh, wee painting vids and whatnot that were done on Epic and things like that there. And uh, thanks for watching. True.